Shalom. I'm going to tell you a story today about what's behind me, the sitter, and how we have a sitter. This is a story that starts off a little sad, but then gets very happy as we go on, all the way until the story lasts until today. So let me start with a story that starts a very, very sad. The Jewish people lived in Eretz Yisrael. We had a Beit HaMikdash, and it was great. And we're talking about almost 2,500 years ago. It was a long time ago. And we had, uh, we had the, the mitzvah of davening to Hashem, of tefillah, of praying to Hashem. But there was no sitter. There was no text. There was no moda'ani. There was no brachot. There was no shem, there was shema, but there was no shemona esrei. There was no tefillah. There was no, no one had a sitter. So how did you daven if you didn't have a sitter? So it's very simple. You would go outside, and this is really how it was done. This is how everybody used to daven. You'd go outside and you'd say, you'd say three things. You'd say how great Hashem was. You'd say, Hashem, I know how great you are. You give, make us happy, and you give us great food, and you make us healthy, and everything is great, and you are great. That's number one. You praise Hashem. In Hebrew, it's called Shevach. Then the second part of your prayer, the second part of your tefillah, would say, Hashem, these are the things I need. I need to be a little smarter in school. Please make me smarter. And whatever you needed, you would ask Hashem for. Hashem, ah, my elbow hurts. Hashem, could you make my elbow feel better today? And that's what you would ask for, all the things. And then maybe you'd ask for to, to, be, to have Mashiach or to have Melech David come back. That's, you would ask for different things. Whatever you wanted to ask for, you were allowed to ask for. And then the last thing is you would thank Hashem. You'd say, Hashem, thank you so much for doing so many great things, especially for keeping us alive. And, that's, and then you would be done with your davening. That would be your whole tefillah. Some people's tefillah was only two minutes long. And sometimes they only did it once a day. But then the Jewish people stopped doing mitzvot. And they stopped listening to Hashem. And they started being mean to each other. And unfortunately, that's what began to happen. And Hashem sent a big Russia, a big bad person, named, he had a really long name, Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar came in, and he was really mean, and he was really bad to the Jewish people. And he killed a lot of Jewish people, he destroyed the Beit HaMikdash, and he told the Jewish people, now you are not going to get to live here in Eretz Yisrael, in your land. I'm going to put you into chains and make you prisoners. This is the sad part of the story. I'm going to burn your Beit HaMikdash, and I'm going to make you come with me back to where I live in a place called Bavel, which is far away from here. And the Jewish people were very sad about this. But they had to move all the way to Bavel. They were not happy about this at all. And the Jewish people went to Bavel. And when they got there, they didn't speak the language that they spoke in Eretz Yisrael. It was a whole different language. And they didn't know the language. So they had to learn the new language. And as they were learning the new language, they began to forget the old language. And then when it came time to Davin, they were very sad. And they couldn't think of what life was going to be like not being in Eretz Yisrael and not having a Beit HaMikdash. And they were just very, very sad. And they couldn't think of the right words to say in Davani. So the great rabbis at the time, they were part of a group of rabbis, of 120 rabbis, called the Anshe Knesset Zagdola. And you know some of them. One of them was Mordechai from the Purim story. They sat down. They said, you know, the Jewish people are having a lot of trouble coming up with the right words to Davin. They don't know how to Davin. So what we're going to do is we're going to write tefillot for them. We're going to write prayers for them so that they can just read the prayers and that'll be the words that they need. Now, there was one Jew named Yosef. He's just a regular Jew, not famous. And Yosef was really sad every single day because every single day Yosef would go and he would try to dive into Hashem, but he couldn't find the right words. First, he would try in Hebrew, but he didn't remember all the words in Hebrew. Then he would try in a new language called Aramit, and he didn't know it well enough. So he didn't have the right words to say to Hashem, but he really missed when he used to daven, when he used to pray in Eretz Yisrael. So this Yosef, one day, they, they, there's a message comes from the Anshik Nesad Agdola, and he said, we've, we've written something called a Sidur. It has all the tefillot, all the prayers that you have to say every day. And Yosef looked at his siddur like this, 
And he opened it up and he read the words and he was so happy because now he got to dive into Hashem like he was used to. And that is how we have a Siddur. And when we open up our Siddur, we should look at it and say, oh, this is so beautiful. Now I know what to say. And that's how we have a sitter. And that's why we should be happy when we get to daven and we have a sitter for ourselves to daven. Shalom.